Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Talking Shit Sports Podcast. Welcome back. P, we got a special one tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Now, uh, before we go get started, I want everyone to follow us on YouTube, Talking Shit Sports Podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Talking Shit Sports Podcast. Hit us up in the DMs. Uh, if you want to re- recommend somebody with a dope sports journey, hit us up. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Talking Shit Sports Podcast, Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. You can find all our journeys up there, man. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into it, man, because we got a special one. You know, we got we, we got Springfield's own Brandeis Hoop legend, co-founder of Boston League Basketball, head coach at Concord Academy in his third year. Really, really giving the passion about basketball back to the community, back to the young kids, man, and and really giving it his all, man. I want to welcome our guest, Mr. Coach Hollins. How's it going, y'all? I appreciate y'all having me. Um, you know, I'm excited. I was thinking about what to say on this you know show earlier but i was like you know what i'm gonna just let them ask the questions that way it's actually it's not nothing rehearsed it's just coming from me you know so let's get it let's get it it's all live on here man it's all love let's get it right 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 so coach uh, let the people know where your sports journey um where where and how your sports journey started um it started you know out in western mass i grew up there went to lawn metal high school uh we had some good teams out there uh, which kind of led me to get recruited at Brandeis, um, which kind of got me to uh, to the Boston area. So I think during my journey, I, I think I learned a lot, you know, and I, I guess when I was playing, I didn't think about I was going to be a coach. You know, I always just said, you know, basketball will, will always open doors. And it has right, you know, right, throughout right. life, you know, it created, you know, relationships. You know, I met my best friend through basketball you know, and my wife, you know, like everything that I've done in basketball, it's kind of led to, you know, something that's been really significant in my life. So I would definitely, you know, that's what it's, it's my passion. And, and that's kind of where, you know, it took me. Super lit, man. Share with us some of the early moments of you hooping, man, that were pivotal in your development, man, that you can think back of. And like right now, like when you, you know, First, got your first bang. You know what I mean? Your first dub, like mm. both, like a rivalry. Like, bring us into those moments early on. I got two moments, right? So, one, I played real AAU. So, like, I'm not knocking what's going on today. Nah, you throwing shots, you throwing some shade. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Every, Take that. Take that. People, people in our generation know what real <laughs> AAU is. It, it was a thing where there was only 30 teams in Massachusetts. You know, yeah. like the state tournament was a real thing. Like everybody was in the States. So if you won States, y'all was actually the best team. It wasn't a D one, a D two, a D three. It was one division, the mass state tournament. So, Mm. you know, I played for the Shack attack team, which is now not a team, but we had pretty much an all-star team from guys from the Western mass area. And every year we just matched up with the Boston blazers in the, in the finals, you know, and it was like, that was a real rivalry. Like, we went back and forth. We won sometimes. They won. You know, looking back at it, it's like we went down to Nationals and we played where's, the Atlanta. Where's, Na- where's Nationals? That's not in Orlando? Oh, uh, we went we went three times. So we went Tennessee, okay. we went Indianapolis, and then we went to Orlando for, for junior year. But it was my sophomore year in particular where I remember we played the Atlanta Celtics or Dwight Howard played for them, mm-hmm. John mm-hmm. Smith. They was a year before us. But Mm -hmm. so we were going down there like we seen Atlanta Celtics on the schedule. We're like, we don't know what to expect, you know. So who was on that team? What notable players was on that team when you guys played? That's the thing. Like, it was no social media. It was no, you know, we don't we don't even know who those guys were. You know, like some of them, we just 6'11 center, 6'8, you know, I'm 6'4 playing center, you know, matching up with those dudes. But I remember the coach at the end of the game, he he pulled me over. He was like, I never seen nobody that rebounds like you. You know, mm-hmm. I think I, I was one of my best games just because I was just battling. You know, that's I was a relentless guy, undersized. You know, I felt like I always had something to prove. So, you know, I played really well in that game. We lost. You know, they had a really good squad all around. They beat us by like eight or nine. Um, and it was just it was a unique experience, though, because it was like, yo, we playing some of the top teams in the country down here and we didn't do very good. You know, that was one of those times where we was hanging out in a hotel. We staying up late, 
you know, running around like wasn't locked you know, in, wasn't locked not, in. Yeah, not taking it serious. But the following year, when we went to Orlando, our coaches did something completely different. They took us out of the hotel. We rented two houses. You know, we had a couple like team moms come down. They were chefing for us. They was keeping us right, like. Mm. And we we ended up going to the Elite Eight, and we 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 ended up losing to uh, New Jersey Roadrunners, and they had this six eleven point guard named Earl Clark. Um, you know, he ended up playing power forward at the college level, but uh, I know he played in the pros for a few years with the Suns. Uh, we ended up losing to those guys, and it was just a crazy experience going down there. To, and we beat a couple of teams. They were like, yo, wh- who are these guys? And you could just right, see right. it in their face. Um, so that was pretty much my AAU journey. Um, in terms of high school first dunk, junior year, I remember it like it was yesterday. Ah, you know, one, one of my, guy, it, one of my guys, this. it was crazy. I, didn't even, bounce. I feel like I just blacked out. Like, it was, it, <laughs> I didn't even know what happened. So, like, he, one of my teammates shot the ball. You know, I ran in. It was a tip jam. Oh. And I just, I don't know. I, you know how when you, when you get contact, you get a little higher. I yeah, jumped yep, a yep, little yep. higher. And I dunked right. Come on, T. Come on, on T. Put it on. Come on, T. Crowd went crazy, right? Not you catching bodies. But check this out. The whistle. <laughs> the whistle. Oh, blew. the whistle. Offensive foul. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Over the back? Right? Over the back. That's what they said. Ah. So I'm I'm black. I don't I don't even know. Like I it, I just blacked out. I didn't know what happened. And right. I ended up on the bench because it was my third foul. And I'm like, I'm like arguing with my coach. I'm like, yo, I don't have no fouls. Like, he's like, yo, that was a foul. And I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? Like in the moment, it was just like, it happened so right, fast. Right, Adrenaline and, pump. and it's probably one person that got that film, but I'm going to be honest. If we watch that film, it, it, it's going to be ugly because it's probably, I probably got to get a VCR from a, 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 from an antique <laughs> shop or something, hey. you know? And that's what it's I tell a lot of people. Like, HD. This is yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's right. like a little joke right. that I, I have with my, my young guys that I coach. Like, I always tell them, like, if I had Twitter, I would have been a high major. You know, that I, I don't know if that's true or not. I just I think it's funny to say because, like, some of the stat lines I had in high school, I, you know, I averaged my senior year 22 points and 18 rebounds. Ooh. You know, like, so we had some, you know, again, it's Western Mass. It was a couple good players, but overall, like, the talent. It's not like a prep school talent level, mm-hmm. you know. Now that I see Nepsack and, and and these teams with actual high majors on it, you know, six elevens, six eight wings, like it's a whole different ball game when you look at Nepsack. And that wasn't really a thing back then. Like some dudes were going prep, but not a lot of dudes. A lot of dudes was PGing at the time. Like, okay, we'll do our four years, do a post grad year, and then now you can try to, you know, you know, advance your recruiting a little bit. But now it's about – it's a completely different landscape. Everybody's reclassing. You got middle right. schoolers reclassing. And it's honestly probably in their best interest. You know, you're really leveling your playing field. Because right. if you right. don't reclass, you're going to go to nationals and all of those kids are going to be a year older than you. You know, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like leveling the playing field. I, so I give that advice now. Like, if you can reclass, do it. You know, if it's a possibility – do it. You know, you'll, you'll get more out of it. You'll catch up on your academics. You'll get stronger as a player. Right, so, right, right. you know, that's kind of the, the trend that is going in now. Um, so what are those that's, conversations and, like with the parents in terms of like when, I, like when you see a student like who needs to do that? Like how, how, do, you, how do you communicate that? Like this is in the best interest of your, um, of your kid. Uh, I just, I, I always give the same advice, you know, from, from the reclassing standpoint. You know, it's just basically because my school, we don't have a middle school. So, you know, it's not for a kid that wants to reclass. It's not a good idea to come to my school as a freshman, you know, Mm -hmm. because unless you're already a freshman, now you have to either transfer or you have to do something that's even more difficult as reclassing at the same school. So I would just say figure out what you really want to do. Like go to that school, pick the school, not for basketball, pick the school for the complete package, the social piece, you know, because you have to be there. Like your right, parents right. are gone, you right. know, especially if it's a boarding school and there's no calling mom and dad every, every weekend to pick you up because they're not going to do it for the most part, especially if they're far away. So mm-hmm. it's like, 
you know, I, I usually give the same advice, you know, reclass. Um, if that's something you're really interested in doing, going to prep school, because if you don't, you're just, you're, you're at a disadvantage. You know, the other guys, 90% of the guys that are in prep school, you know, ha- at least basketball have reclassed. Right. Right. I mean, cause you see like the, the top recruits, like, um, Imani Bates that just reclassed and he ended up going, he's going actually to Memphis next year. And um, a whole bunch of, you know, kids reclassed from, you know, that's going into college. And, and like you said, now that you just mentioned it, like, yeah, if you're dominating the high school level and you're, you know, a top, what, 15, 15 to, you know, 20, why not reclass? You know, because if, if, if you're going to go out there, you're going to, you know, like you said, go go to those schools for the, for the whole entire package. But most of these kids, you know, they're getting ranked. When you're ranked in so high, your expectation is the NBA, you know. Mm-hmm. So why not get better, work out with, I mean, play with, you know, some some good players that know the game, get coached by these, you know, elite coaches, Penny Hardways, uh, you know, all these coaches that, you know, are coaching in a D1 level, you know, to better your game. No, I agree because the whole reclass thing, you can, you can always come back up too. As right. long as you're in line with your – and that's what Imani Bates did – you know, he came back to his original class. So technically, when he finished, he not a reclass anymore. You know, he did his four years. Now he's at Memphis. Maybe that has something to do with NIL. You know, and now these guys can, you know, make some money off their names, which I'm a big believer in. Right, you know, right, right, right. It's your name. You know, if you want to build, like Zion, he had a million followers, you know, at Duke. You know, like, that's his name. You know, he put in right. the work. ESPN is 30 games on ESPN. And now he's, you know, he just gets a, a free year of school, uh, school, some gear and, yeah, you know, some yeah. little stipends here and there. Like <laughs> the billions right. of dollars have been right. made off that guy, you know? So like, right. I'm, I'm really excited for the college kids and, and building their brands. And that's, that's actually something that we're going to try, you know, do a little research on, but we're going to try to help kids, you know, players that are, are interested in that and help them build their brands you know, starting as early as middle school, you know? That's good. That's good. Yeah, it's super dope, man. It's, it's a super important, man. Uh, and just in terms of the financial piece, like, people people forget or or I don't think people get it. Like, if you don't know, you should know that, you know, being an athlete is expensive. It's not right. It's not something that, uh, that, that that is for the pain of heart. Like, it takes commitment. It takes sacrifice. And, it, and it's a big financial piece. Um, 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 and sometimes a lot of the athletes don't have the resources to do so. Um, but you know, as uh, as 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 former athletes, as mentors, as as coaches, you know, we just have to help these kids find ways to 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 finance their dream of uh, either 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 going to college or, or playing pro athletics because it, it's it, it's a deep commitment on 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 all ends. Um, I'm pretty sure you see it every day. Right. I, I do, and like certain kid, like certain players, they be like, you know, like you'll get a kid every now and then in a workout and be like, yo, this workout costs money, and I, you know. I'm a, I'm a funny guy, like, in terms of, like, my responses sometimes. I'll be like, do your parents work for free? You know, like, <laughs> I hit them with that sometimes. Or, like, just, like, they don't understand, like, the timing, you know, to get in a facility itself uh, as a trainer. Let's just say me, for example, right? I'm starting out fresh as a trainer. If I go to, you know, the YMCA, I got to pay either a membership or a court rental. So, right. like, am I supposed to pay out of my own pocket? to train somebody that's not in my family or just somebody that, you know, I'm trying to help get better. Mm-hmm. So I, sometimes you'll get a kid and he'll be like, Oh, I didn't even think about it like that. So like, as you said, as like a mentor, that's certain things that we don't just teach basketball. We teach, you know, little stuff in life like that, you know, like respecting what, you know, what people do for a living. Like, cause I love it. I love doing the training. And if I had to do this for free, I couldn't, it's not like I can, you know, like, if I had some kind of, you know, investment I did five, ten years ago where, you know, I won the Powerball or something like that, sure, maybe just to, you know, because I really enjoy it. But right, it's right. one thing that, you know, like you said, it, it's, it's, not, it's not cheap to be an athlete, especially somebody that's trying to play at the next level, you know, when there's all these, you know, different things that you need to do to put yourself in that situation. All right. Coach, how how important has um social media has been for like trainers like yourself? Because you see like the the um, Chris Berkeley's that has just been killing it with the train with the trainers with you know he's been training like the top high school players. 
NBA players like Melo? Like, how important has social media been for um, for trainers like yourself? I, I, I take Chris for, uh, as an example. Like, his, his journey has been tremendous. Like, he started out, you know, working out with the Knicks, you know, and and he's built his way, you know, up to a good spot where now guys are seeking him out. You know, he's creating partnerships and sponsorships. He's got Puma, East Bay. Yep. You know, he's got his own clothing line. So, like, he's a guy that's kind of like more of a pioneer in the social media, um, you know, age where, you know, guys look at him. Guys look at the Drew Hanlon's, the Michael Lancaster's, these guys that are, you know, doing this, this training thing at a very high level um, from a social media standpoint, you know, with views and, 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 you know, follow like all that, the following and stuff like that. Uh, for me personally, I just think it's a good way to connect. You know, these kids don't, they don't, they don't leave their phones. You know, like I got guys in water breaks hitting their phone real quick. Like it's almost like, a, it's almost like a, an addiction to, to some of these guys in the sense where it's like, it's glued. It's, it's there. It's, it's, it's something that they, they really look at. So, you know, for us, we just try to, you know, post videos of other guys working out. I think it, it shows progress. Like I got guys that I've been training since they've been in fourth grade, you know, then I, I get parents reaching out and say, Hey, Oh, I've seen this kid. Or, you know, I got people like my friends and family, like, Oh, I've been watching you work out with this kid. He's getting so much better. Like, so like, I think for me, I use it mostly for, for that purpose, um, to gain clients, you know, to, you know, promote current clients. Um, and just to network, like you guys reaching out to me, I don't, I don't think that doesn't, I don't think this happens without social media. Social media, right? Yeah. So, I think it's a big deal, you know. Yeah, it just creates access. You know, yes. I think, uh, yep. I think the biggest thing is, you know, for athletes, man, we're always looking to get better. We're always looking, how can we leverage our time in order to, how can we leverage our time in order to get to the next level? How do we find these avenues that are going to give us the best chance to leverage? Not only our time, but uh, but we're just in like like the pure investment. Like we're putting our body, like athletes every day put their bodies on the line, um, right. and, and right. we have a very small window in order to capitalize on this athletic gift that we have. So so if you're if you don't have access to it, I mean you better get with it. But um, uh, another thing what we want that I want to ask you, man, just in terms of you know you know being a uh, a former hooper, now being a coach and trainer, man, how like how do you preach competition and how do you bring it out? And your players, because like it's very important. A lot of guys don't really get the essence of like, hey, I need to get out here and compete. And a lot of guys just want to be cute. Let me do a couple moves. Let me get the oohs and ahs. But like in terms of being a dog and being out there, like really wanting it and being someone who's trustworthy, someone who's valuable, like to do their role. How do you preach competition today? I think the big piece with the competition is is with their training, doing the groups. You know, like. People will reach out, oh, I want private training, private training, private training. Like, all right, but a private training session is limited. You know, we can we can work on specific skills, but you can't get a lot of the pieces that you need out of it. So, like, our big thing with Boston Elite is we do a lot of group stuff. So we, we tailor the groups based on level, you know, age, certain. But certain guys that can go, you know, I got fifth graders that demo the ball handling for a ninth graders, you know, cause they're in the gym, they're working out every day, you know? So like, I would say play up, you know, in terms of competition, you know, best thing my dad ever did for me in terms of basketball in 11th grade, he threw me in the men's league and I got beat up, you know, physically, mentally, you know, but it opened up my eyes and I'm like, okay, now I'm getting to that age where I'm not, I'm not the big guy on campus. I'm not the go-to guy. So like, it makes you work a little harder. So I guess the biggest thing I would say is if you can play up, you know, a lot of, and it happens at AAU now where kids are, you know, playing their level, you know, reclassing and playing, still playing their level. Like sure. At a big tournament. Yeah. See what you see where you're at against the, the top in the nation. But if you're a local guy, if you're playing local and you're a reclass, we, we, we like to play up, you know, now, cause, it's helping you get better. You know, you're playing against an older guy, a faster guy. You know, that's that's the in terms in terms of competition. You're not going to get better than that. Facts. That's key. That's key. And that's something that, that I mean. I think we, uh, you know, we spoke to a lot of you know 
hoopers and trainers and coaches already, man. Like, yo, competition is key, man. And, and sometimes I think in the age of social media, um, um, you know, just just with all the access to private training and then like specialized um, um, experiences, man, it gets lost. That, but 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 <laughs> damn that with the talking shit sports podcast, I'll be damned if competition gets lost. <laughs> <laughs> these, these kids better get into it, man, and really get right. after it, man, because that's the only like you know, like you said, like playing in these national tournaments or going or, or really fighting for a scholarship. Coaches like kids at a young age need to understand, like, in order for you to get a, a, a college scholarship, like that coach has to put his job on the line for that scholarship. Right. So it's it's nothing to, it's nothing to mess around with. Like, right. like you got to be a hooper. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to put in the work, man. Talk about it. <laughs> so, and I'm glad you said that because then you you got a lot of this this offer stuff. Oh, I got an offer here. It's like some of the offers, yeah, are valid, but other offers are not. You know, it's like and w- coaches know, like they know who 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 gets offers from certain schools. Like if it's coming from that school, yeah. But sometimes you got AAU programs that will say, oh, this guy has an offer from this school, but, you know, some of that, this is, they're not binding, you know, like, right, verbal. and it's, you know, so yeah, exactly. So it's a lot of, okay, if you have that offer, that offer might go away because tomorrow, Amani <laughs> Bates just signed today. Right, so right. somebody on Memphis lost, you know, one of their offers, you know, right. so like, it's kind of like, if you, I, I guess I could tell advice for for young guys if you get an offer and you really like the school Fine. let's get let's get let's get to it like right. don't waste don't waste time trying to find the next you know the, if it's a fit it's a fit and you'll right. know it right away once you're on campus you know you'll see the school oh i like it here i like the weather or well, i don't like it here you know right. i don't like i don't like you know certain things about it i don't like that it's not in a city like that's the thing about, you know, having opportunities to go to these different schools to see them because every school is different. And that's what the one thing I do like about Boston. There's a ton of different schools. You got the big schools, the small schools, the city schools, the suburban schools, all girls schools. There's literally everything in Boston, Ivy Leagues and, you know, and whatnot. So you have a lot of options, you know, to, to kind of figure out which, what works for you, what works for your family, et cetera. But how do you how do you tell that to a player like because because like I said we're in the age group where we're in a we're in a day and age where a lot of these kids they get big headed you know they yep. get a little big headed and, and they feel like okay I got an offer from BC I can hold off until Kentucky starts to you know hit me up like how do you, how do you sit down and 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 tell a player like dude you gotta you gotta Hold on, Pete. Hold on, Pete. Because if you're getting offered by BC, you're not getting offered by Kyle Perry. Let's just let's just make up the distinction. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Kyle Perry's not looking for players who who are interested in BC. I'm saying, I'm but it know. can start. It can start there. It can start from BC. You know, and then you you start working on your game or whatever the case is. I mean, sometimes you can get complacent. You see that BC offer, and then that that fire and that feels like it it, it stops there because we, we see we see it happen. Yeah, I guess it comes down to your style of play. Because mm-hmm. if BC offers you and you like, you want to be at home and you want to play at a high level, like I don't, I don't think there's a better option than BC. They play in the ACC, right. so right off the rip, you're playing at North Carolina, you're playing at Duke, and Duke, you're playing at NC State, you're playing at all those big time schools. I mean, I, I don't see a much better opportunity for somebody that wants to go to school in Boston, right. um, you know, and play a high level. Um, but I, I got a story about BC and it's, it was a former coach. I don't even, I do know who it was. I'm not going to say his name or anything, but certain guys will offer certain players, you know, earlier than others. Like he, he wasn't offering a lot of the young guys. And I was at an open gym, you know, coaching at Brandeis recruiting a kid. And he was there recruiting another kid. He didn't end up offering that kid till later. But this kid at that point had no no interest anymore. You know, like he ended up going at Villanova. He's still at Villanova, mm-hmm. you know, and he's a senior and he's one of the best players in the country. And BC didn't pull the trigger on him as a freshman. And to me, I'm like, it's a no brainer. This kid is 6'6". He's finishing way up top. He's guarding multiple positions he's shooting the ball he plays on a high level AAU team there's not much more you can ask for in a player right and then when you come to the table late that's just 
maybe a bad evaluation or or a bad process. You know, I don't I don't know what BC's mindset was at the time. I, I you know I wasn't really tapped in with the coaches, but I do know now BC is is making some 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 good power plays in terms of recruiting local guys, and it's looking like you know they're, they're pushing forward in that right direction. They got the Langford brothers, you know Gianni Thompson over there, so they got some local guys um, that can you know make some noise. I think you know. So speak upon speak speak on that 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 Boston well Massachusetts um you know landscape of basketball because I think it's over the last I want to say five or six so probably like ten years from now ten years it's been growing like you have um, Terrence Mann that's playing right now for for the Clippers I think he's mm-hmm. out of uh, Lawrence I believe yeah and, Lowell uh, yeah Lowell and then you have um, Michael Carter Williams and Shabazz and all that stuff. And you know, God rest his soul. Um, uh, uh, T. Clark. You know, mm-hmm. so I mean, I feel like that landscape is getting is getting better over the, you know these last couple of years. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad you said Terrence Mann because he he was one of my favorite guys to watch. You know, him and Bruce Brown played BABC together. You know, and that's when I had my own program. So mm-hmm. anytime we matched up with a BABC team, we was getting beat by like 50. You know, mm-hmm. they was pressing, running, dunking, jumping having a party and I'm just like, Hey, ain't much I can do over here on the sideline. Probably couldn't do nothing. Even if I was in the game with those guys. Um, but in terms of these younger guys, <laughs> not <stop> getting waxed. <laughs> yeah, we, I ain't gonna lie, man. When I, when I used to see like BABC expressions, you know, those top teams with, with, with my other team, it was always a long one, but it's good for, it's good for the kids. You know, like I'd rather play in that game than, beat some random team by, by 50. I don't, I don't right. want, I don't want that win. I just don't want it. Like that's me as a, as a competitor. I don't want to play teams that, you know, are quite honestly inferior to, to our teams. I want to play better competition. Cause I think that that really makes the best out of the players. Um, and you mentioned um, some of the younger guys. So I, I actually, you know, had a chance to coach Terrence when I was at rivers, you know, for a year before he went to Brewster, but, I, I gotta say, I, I I've never seen a kid or a player with that kind of impact. You know, yeah. like you know, Terrence, you know, was a, a special player. You know, and he he drew people to him. You right. know, and you know, it, it was just tough when it you know when everything went down. You know, you could see it. You could see the community. You could you could see the kids that I work with. You know, like they were all really really affected because he he was their hero. You know, right. and, you know, it, it was it's unfortunate to the rest of the world because he he was headed for greatness. Like right. his skill set, I, I personally believe his skill set was tailored for the NBA. Yeah. You know, his his game. Yeah, he was, you know, had some ups and downs in college or whatever. But that happens, you know, from time to time. Sometimes it's a system thing. Sometimes it's, a, you know, a fit. You know, he had some injury issues. But I just think the NBA was his style of play, pick and roll, space, you know, I'm athletic, I can get to the rim. And he was a, a great, you know, guy that that loved the pass, you know. So it's just tough, you know, looking at that situation. But he he definitely had a really huge impact on, you know, Boston community and as you can see, you know, throughout the country. Big salute to him, big salute to his family, man. Yes. Bro, uh, I, I want to get back to uh uh, so your so talk to the people about your recruiting journey in terms of like how how that went down your senior year um, and then how you ended up where you ended up. Uh, I didn't have a lot, you know, in terms of recruiting. Again, this was before Twitter, before Facebook, before videos. Um, it was all word of mouth. Coaches actually getting on the road recruiting. Um, there wasn't a ton of recruiting camps then. Um, I guess my biggest break was playing in the playoffs um my senior year one of the Brandeis players his father you know was at the game and after the game he, he called the coaching staff and was like yo I gotta go see this kid and you know two couple games later they showed up and I swear the Brandeis deal was done in a week you know they came down to the boys and girls club they sat with me my dad and my uncle we we're it's funny we we're in the library at the club sitting in these chairs for toddlers 
And I'm talking about. I know, I know what you mean. I know. I exactly know what you mean. I know exactly my, I'm, I'm six four. My dad is six <laughs> two. Your knees and, at your chest. Yeah, and right. it was like that. That was just what it was. That was the space we had. And you know, the coach, you know, coach me and talked to my my family, and it was just the right fit. You know, as soon as I got to school, I mentioned it to my guidance counselor, and she was like, "If you can get into Brandeis, you gotta go." So. All right. I got really good advice. I did it. You know, initially I was hoping to go to a PG year at Wilbraham Munson to try to, you know, boost my recruiting. Um, it just didn't work financially. You know, they wanted too much money. Brandeis was a better fit long term. Now I look back, I'm like, I'm glad I did that, you know, because sure. it opened up a lot of stuff for me and, you know, kind of got me where I'm at today. I mean, how was, how was playing at Brandeis in those four years, man? Let the folks know, man. I want you to talk a little shit right now. Go ahead and do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Them stats, man. Them stats looking crazy. Yeah, I, I, I think um, we did a really good job, like, putting our team together. I guess I got to give a lot of credit to the 08 class. Um, Steve DeLuca, Joe Coppins, you know, Kwame, um, all those guys that were ahead of us, they kind of showed us the ropes, you know. So they had, you know, some – they were building the program. We came in – the year was like built. We were like the, the the missing pieces. So we 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 won 20 games my first year, made the NCAA tournament. Unfortunately for me, I broke my foot at the end of the season. So I missed the tournament. I sat in the boot, you know, I watched the tournament. We won the first round game, and then we ended up losing the second round. And it was like, man, if I was out there, we could have we probably could have went a little further. You know, like it was, you know, it was that kind of team we had. Um Fast forward to the next year, surgery, um, recovery, and then we. we had, How was that? How was that like that like handling that adversity and coming back for the next season? Man, I had arguments with my dad because he didn't want me to play in the men's league in the summer, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I gotta get back. Like, right, I can't right. be afraid to to get hurt again because I'm ready. Like, I feel ready. My doctor says I'm clear. I gotta get back in shape. So you know. He finally, he let me play. And he was like, you know what? You're right. You know, and it, it worked out. We ended up winning the men's league, which uh, you guys, I don't know if you're familiar with the Springfield, but at the time, the Hubbard Park League was was the league. You know, like everybody was playing. So we ended up winning that league. Um, we we played really well. And it kind of boosted me into that, into that mode where I, I felt like I was back. And we had a really good year at Brandeis that year. I think we... We won 23 games. Um, we hosted the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. And I'll tell you what, that first round game was a classic. And those guys from LaSalle have my most respect. You know, those guys, it was a great game. And I don't know if y'all know the proximity between LaSalle College and Brandeis, but it's, it's a 10-minute drive. And when I tell you it was 2,500 people in there, mm. it was packed. Both schools, was the, it kind of felt like a high school game. You know, like you'll go to a D3 game and and crowds be kind of unless it's like a huge game. And that was one of them that that really stuck out. And it was great. We ended up going to the Elite Eight that year and we um, we lost to Amherst College. And I felt like the NCAA kind of kind of robbed us in the sense that not saying Amherst didn't beat us because they beat us fair and square. But the way that the, the selection committee did that. We played Amherst College in Plattsburgh, New York. Y'all don't even y'all don't even know what that is. You shaking your head? It's up there, like it's right. it's damn near near Rochester, and they were the one seed. So we ended in that in that bracket. We ended up beating them, and then we played Amherst College in the Elite Eight in front of maybe 150 people, because nobody was there, and it didn't really it didn't feel like a big game. You know what I mean? So, like, that's what I mean. I would have rather played them at their own court because right, right. we would have had a fan bus out there. Their crowd would have been there and it would have been live. Like, that's what we strive for as athletes. We want to play in that atmosphere. Right, so, right. you know. Feeding off the fans, feeding off the crowd. That yeah. Is important. Yeah, so that was my sophomore year, my junior year. Um, we had a lot of, I guess, inner inner problems with the team in terms of the philosophy we had you know guys coming back from injuries you know other guys getting injured new guys coming in we made the tournament but it just it didn't really feel like that you know that cohesiveness that we had the the previous year 
And then my senior year, we had six guys in our, in our, in our rotation. We had, if y'all look, I don't know if y'all got to look, find a picture of our team picture. We didn't even have 10 guys. Our coach used to play Sean Bloom, my guy, he used to play every practice. I'm sitting in the tape room next to coach and we getting taped up and Bloom, (laughs) y'all laughing and y'all don't even know this guy. This guy Bloom thinks he's the best. Like if I hit him up right now, he's going to tell me he's still the best player in the country. Because he he was a walk on at Memphis, so he played for Calipari. Yeah, he played with you know Antonio Anderson um, and all those guys. Um, So it's just like it's funny thinking about you know those days, and you know he he had a he had a really good impact on us, and we ended up going to the Elite Eight that year, Mm -hmm. and we lost to Williams College, you know, and at their place. And when I tell you that crowd was crazy man that crowd was nuts you know and you know we look back and how many how many people was in the gym probably probably 1500 2000 but they were moving like the, yeah. like they had they was doing something they had this guy that was like their orchestrator in the crowd yo they i never seen a crowd move like that like they was doing some like this thing of like the swag surf you know <laughs> on steroids like they was moving and it, it was just, it was just, you know, those are the memories, man. And I really mm-hmm. look back and, and it's funny, you know, I was talking to my best friend uh, recently about somebody on the team and it was, he was like, yo, you know, you know, the new Celtics top assistant, he was on that team that beat us. And I was wow. like, look at that. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. And it's like, that's crazy. You know, it's just like, it shows like the basketball community, these guys, you know, they kind of stick in the community. So right, it's right, right, right. about building those connections and those networks. So talk about it, man, like how, you know, basketball has done, you know, especially opening doors for you and allowed you to create so many meaningful, impactful relationships, man. Talk about that a little bit more and just in terms of, you know, exactly like for these young guys, man, who are, you know, who are thinking about taking back basketball seriously or trying to take basketball seriously, how important the relationship part is into your success. I think it's huge, you know, like looking back, like I met met one of my best friends, you know, in seventh grade due to AAU, you know, and it's like, I used to get rides with them and that's how it started. Oh, you need a ride to practice, you know, then we playing 2K in the basement, then we going out to get pizza, you know, and then it's like, yo, these are my guys now. So it's like, it creates lifelong friendships. That's part of the reason why I do coach now and I really like AAU opposed to the town stuff, like a town team, you got everybody from the town and you just play with the same kids over and over and over and over. AAU, oh, I'm playing with this kid from this town, this town. So it's like, it helps create, you know, friendships, you know, relationships, you know, and like I met my wife in college, you know, through basketball, you know, and, and I don't think, I don't think that happens if, if I don't go to Brandeis, you know? So like, I think a lot of it is, you know, you're in the right spot at the right time and, you know, kind of building these relationships is just, I think that goes neck and neck with basketball. It's just, it it is what it is. Thanks, thanks, thanks. So, like, you finished your career at Brandeis, man. How did you approach the next steps in terms of uh, either pro ball or continuing your career or just heading into the coaching? How did you go about it? Um, I think the last piece of the basketball was me going to, the, N- the NABC hosted an all-star game for the first time um, at the Final Four. So they they flew everybody out. You know, you got to spend time with, with guys that you used to play against. You know, we did a little community service. We went to Virginia. Um, and it was just a unique experience. And when I got down there, I kind of realized, like, it, it was it. You know, like, the pro thing, it wasn't it wasn't in the cards for me. I'm what not happened? saying I didn't. What happened? Was it, like... Like the talent, or like nah, what not it? the talent. Like I, I mean, I had a good game down there. Like that was the first time where I got to play. You know, a position I liked to play. I like I was a like more of a point forward, in my opinion. You know, I did a really good job fitting into my system at Brandeis, where I was a big man. But you know, I had ability to you know make plays. You know, like you don't finish with two hundred assists in, in your career. If you can't make plays, you know, so like, and that's what me not even being like a primary ball handler, we had Mm -hmm. great ball handlers. So like, for me, I didn't need to do that. You know, we had, we had Andre Roberson, we had, you know, Kenny, those guys, they handled the ball for us a lot. So like when I got to that all-star game, 
it, it kind of like it was a it was for free, you know. And I got the it was fun, man. And but just my body, like you know, gearing up for it, it wasn't the same. I'm like, I can't, do do I want to try to make a run at this? You know, go overseas, maybe get stuck in a third world country, maybe not get paid for months. I heard a lot of stories about guys going overseas, not getting their money on time. And I was like, I don't have an agent. I don't have any connections to that. I don't work out. Like, I wasn't work- – like, dudes was not working out. We was hooping. Right. Like, playing in five leagues. That was the thing. Like, now things, dudes are actually training, which I think that would have changed my game completely if I was training because I can handle the ball better than I was when I was in college. The problem is I'm not running like that. I'm not jumping like that. So, like, as far as, like, the straight skills – my skills are better in terms of handling the ball right now, shooting the ball, than they were when I was in college, believe it or not. All right, man. I, I heard you speak of uh, of your dad a few times, man. Can you can you share with us how important his guidance and just him being there for you throughout the years in terms of how that helped you on and off the court? Yeah, man. That dude, man, I give, I give a lot of credit to him because, you know, we didn't have – a lot. I mean, he made it, he made everything work for us, like in terms of making sure I had everything, but I had a really good support system with my family. But like I would, my dad was a taxi driver for a good portion of my life. Like he would be on the other side of Springfield and I would be calling him for a ride to the boys club. He would like literally do his job, literally like leave one side of town, come pick me up, drop me off. And now I look back, I'm like, yo, that was a 90 minute swing. Like he probably could have made a hundred bucks during that time. Like, but he would, that was him. You know, he had it. It it was something he wanted to do. He helped me. So like in turn, it kind of kept me level headed. You know, I didn't get involved with, you know, a lot of the stuff that, you know, makes guys go left, you know, it kept me around basketball. So I I will say, you know, he, he, he gets a lot of the credit, you know, for me, you know, becoming the player, the man I am today. And I think, you know, without him, I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. You know, I don't, I don't know. Like it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to imagine. Like, and I, I really, you know, I feel for a lot of the guys that don't have that father figure, you know? So like some of the guys that come through our program, sometimes we play, play that role, you know, especially when I was first starting out, you know, we were doing a lot. Like I was picking up a lot of the kids, driving them, you know, I didn't even meet some of their families, you know, but you know, they would just come to the gym through recommendations you know, we bring them, we get them food and stuff. And and for a while that was working, but then it just got to the point where it's like, I'm not going to be able to survive if, you know, I keep going this route. So we switched our focus onto the training and, you know, our, our, our AAU thing kind of switched into a, a, another realm. But I think my dad just, he, he played a big role in, you know, making me who I am today. And, you know, I really appreciate everything, you know, he's done and he's continued to do. Shout out to Pops, man. Yeah. Shout out to Pops. Yeah, Jim, Big Jim. Yeah, he... Big Jim. Shout out to Big Jim. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, as soon as he going to be posting his link. Have a, the whole <laughs> yeah, fam. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. My fam is deep. They, they deep in New York. Newburgh, New York. Yeah. I got, I got, I got more cousins than I even know. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> But it's all love. When they reach yeah. out, it's, it's what's up, cuz. You know, it's like, it's not, it's all genuine, you know, and that's right. what I really like. And that's another piece about the social media. Like, you know, you get to connect with family members more so than you normally would, you know. Right. Like, access. The access is key. Yeah. It's like you're right, it's like you're right there. What's yeah, no, I am. I'm just yeah. one one send button away. Right. Hit me up. Right. How many athletes yeah. do you have in your family? Like, was like, like sports big in the fam? Um, in my else who? Nah, I mean, I, I'm one of the only boys, you know, like all my cousins and sisters, they all dance. So yeah, I guess that that's kind of athletic. Like that's, it's not a sport, but. <laughs> they gonna they see can... this, they go, they gonna get at you. Yeah, they, 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 they do their thing. They active. It ain't like they not active. You know, they just, they don't play sports. Like, right, right. like you know, they, they could dance better than me. I'll tell you that, you know, so <laughs> that. that's, that. that's, you know, that's something that, you know, they did. So I, I guess I was, and then they were all older, you know, like, right, you know, right. it was me and one other cousin and we're the youngest, you know, and then, you know, then it started, you know, the nieces and nephews started, you know, coming around a little, yeah. you know, as I got a little older. So, 
you know, that's kind of, you know, the, the family's the family history. I guess I had two cousins, two or three cousins that we used to play. They were all three, four years older than me. And we used to play like, you know, in the park, stuff like that. They used to bully me. I think that, that really helped me become a player. And when I say bully, I mean like on the court, they posted me up trying to move me, yeah. you know, and I get physical. That, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That, that's up? how I used to do that's how I used to do DB back in the days. Stop. Stop. <laughs> back in the Stop the fraudulent lines. <laughs> Stop the fraudulent lines. That's we used, crazy. To, we used to play my we used to play my oldest cousin two on one and he used to beat us. That's how good he was. But now I make this joke with them. I'm like all three of y'all can't beat me now. <laughs> Jeez. So it's 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 kind of funny to look back. They about they in a you know, I'm 34. They in they they low low 40s right now. Is there is there anything throughout the journey, throughout the years, man, that you the, the that you either regret or want to like a do over, like in terms yeah. of the sports journey? Yeah, something that you wish you would have done yep. differently. What's up? Yeah. Holla at us. Holla at us. Tell us what's up. Uh, my my senior year of high school. Um, you know, like we had a sit like we had a get a game winning chance. You know, at a shot. You know, and just my my natural instinct, I was just moving the ball within a possession. But if I look back now, like it was like 10 seconds left. I wish I just grabbed the ball with 10 seconds, told everybody to get out the way right. and let me try to make the play. You know what I mean? Like, but as a young player, I wasn't thinking that, you know, I was just thinking my guy, he, he hit shots. Like, let's right, keep right, the right. ball. He's make wide it. open. You know, he didn't make the shot, you know, and. Again, I, I would trust him to make that so shot. You was next LeBron time. in it. You was LeBron in it. You was making the right, the right, the right play. The right play. It's all about the right play. The right play. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Not, not that that, like, nah. Yeah, now that I look back <laughs> at it, I guess a little, I did. a little spice of uh, Mamba in you. Yeah, I took the, the I took Mamba the LeBron approach. Yeah, I wish right. I did get my Kobe bag real quick. Right. Um, but it is what it is, you know. That that's the something I look back and I, I share that story with players, you know. And I think I think eventually it's gonna it's gonna hit the right player and it's like event he's gonna take the last shot, whether he right. makes it or not, you know, that that's that's to be seen. But the confidence to take that shot is everything. And I I'll, that's the I'm a confidence guy more than anything. Like okay. the kids that play for me, they know that. Like right. I had a kid two weeks ago come to a workout. And he was like, he passed up an open three. I was like, yo, what are you doing? He's like, yo, my other coaches told me not to shoot that. Yeah. I was like, bro, I don't care. <laughs> Heal O'Neal. Like, you open, you shoot the ball. Because we got guys that can rebound. So, like, right. me, I was a rebounder. So, I, I enjoy when people shoot, you know, because now I get opportunities to do what I do. So, like, same thing, you know, like, but more importantly, if you open, it's just a confident yeah. thing. Like you have to take it. Like you can't make it if you don't take it. Right. Speaking of that, I, I, two players that come to mind, man, in terms of confidence, man. I want to know, just just from your expertise, how would you approach it, man? Um, uh, I'm saying they both play for the Sixers, Markel Fultz and Ben Simmons. How do you approach them getting their confidence in terms of them shooting the rock and being effective on the floor? Because the last thing we've seen from Ben. You know what I mean, he's he's giving up a layup and throwing it out. Like, like, come on, like, what are you doing? Yeah, the Ben Simmons thing. Like, I'm a big Ben Simmons fan, and I think he still has a chance to become oh, a really, yeah. really good yeah. player. I I think I think he should definitely take the shot more often, but I also think he should be more aggressive trying to score at the rim. Like, I don't I don't care that he doesn't shoot three pointers. Like, I don't. That's not an end all be all for me because like people say, oh well, back up. Well, right. back up. He's six eleven coming downhill. Like, what are you gonna do when he's coming full speed at you? Right. You could take a charge, or you know, he's talented enough where he can hit spin moves, euros, like maybe a jump, like pro hop to a floater. Like he's got to get in this that too. Like he's got to get more of that that heart in him, and I think it will come as he gets more mature. And a little older, like people still forget he's a young right. guy. Like right. you know, but he's five years in the league now, though. Like, yeah, come on, so, like, come I mean, on. Like, how much like... time do you? You don't got much time, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, this is this is it. This year is it. This year yeah, is it. He, he, Who he knows? To, he has to definitely show up this year. He definitely has to show up this year because, like D said, it's five years in, and you just alluded that 
you're six ten. You're coming downhill. Nine out of ten, you either you're getting guarded by a point guard that's too small, or you're getting guarded by a big that's too slow. You have the advantage, so go attack the rim. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. Yep. No, I, and I think I think he really should start doing that more. But also, like people also forget, he's one of the best defenders in the league. Like oh, let's no. let's not. Let's yeah. not take away that He's side of the ball. ball. He's not you a know, ball. like, so yeah. like, I think at Philly, they got two options. You tell them, hey, dude, you got to start shooting more or let's find another point guard for us. Like, right. I, I think Ben Simmons could still play off the ball. He could be like, and I was telling people this about Giannis, like, he's better as a screener. It's hard to guard that. Like, right. instead right. of him dribbling, dribbling, and that's why I think they, they were successful this year because you saw Chris Middleton's coming off the pick and roll. Now Giannis is rolling. Now you got a, a guy that can finish rolling. And now it's just people forget that that's a big part of basketball. Yeah. Like screening. People like screening is, is something it's that if you don't yeah. It's it's, it's simple. <laughs> it's simple. You know what I mean? Especially when you're six ten, seven foot, you know, set the screen, you're good. Open lane to the basket. I mean, Stockton and Malone did it for 20 years. Like, so if guys can't figure out that, like, it's, it's, it's that simple. You know, if you got the right point guard that knows how to find you, that knows how to take the mid range, you know, that knows how to kick it to the shooter, then you're going to, your team is going to be pretty successful. So I think, uh, you know, Philly, if they, if they use Ben Simmons in different scenarios, not just him as the point guard, I think he becomes more successful, but, I'm not. I'm also not an NBA. Coach. <laughs> so as you're watching the NBA now, man, you know, as a, as, a, as an active coach and active trainer, and when you're looking at the NBA now, <clears throat> like, what what part of the game do you enjoy watching? Because it's it's, it's it's a three and go game right now. So Trey like, Young. Okay, Trey. And because I like Trey because he's only six one. Right. You know, and he's like more like for these kids that's coming up behind. Like that's who you have a chance to be like. Trey Young, a better chance because not everybody's gonna grow to six five, six six, right, six right, eight. Right, right. You know, a lot of people will be six one. So figure it out. Like, not saying what Trey Young is doing is easy. Like, right. no, he he worked for what he's doing. Like, right. he can shoot it really well. His handle is crazy. You know, more importantly, his confidence is through the roof. Oh, like yeah. he thinks he's the best player in the league. Like, and he should. Like, that's that's his mentality. And I was watching him on the shop. He said that. He said when he first got to the league, he's watching KD, and he was like, as a fan, he's like, now I'm trying to go at them dudes. I'm like, yeah, Trey, yeah, like that's, and he's 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 what these kids are looking up to. So I'm I'm actually glad he said that, um, and that's the kind of guy that I like with, with tremendous confidence. In terms of bigs and guys who like who played your position, man, who do you like to look at now and appreciate now? There's not a lot of bigs in the league. Um, I will say Jokic is probably my favorite big because he does everything in terms of rebounding, passing. He'll dunk on you. Post game is like crazy. Like so, in terms of bigs, Jokic he got it right now. You right. taking him over MB? MVP. No, no, no. Are you taking? I know he won the MVP. But are you taking him yep. like right now? If you had, if you had, if you had one draft pick, you take him over MB? Easy. 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 Wow. Wow. Why, why not? And B can't get it off the rim and run run it up. He can. We've seen him do it. We've he seen him can. do it. He can. But he I, averaged eight and a half assists this year. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. He ain't had nobody else to pass it to. That's not true. <laughs> Ooh, Tobias yeah, so, Harris? Tobias had one of his best Tobias, years. Yeah, ben then, then ben have, won't um, shoot it? Come then on. You have, it's, uh, um, there's other guys out there. You got Danny Green. who Danny Green was over sometimes. there. <laughs> right. You, you laughed at that one. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I got Jokic over, over and B nah, for nah, my yeah. team. I got Jokic. I got to have Curry, Curry was over there this year, too, as well. He, he had, had a good year. Well. Seth had a good year. Seth had a good year. In terms of, like, like hanging out, like, Embiid is a funny dude. Like, he's probably a better locker room guy, like, He's my kind of locker room guy. You know right. what I mean? Like he he's he's funny when he needs to be. You know, he plays physical. I'm not knocking Embiid by any means, but Jokic is just like yeah. he's a new he's a new generational player, you know, like and he's a second like a, a second round draft pick, right? 
Second round Second yeah. round yeah. yeah, so like he got it out the mud too. Like and B was I think he was a fourth right. pick he with, was, with yep, yep. And, sat out the first year. Right. and he was an injured player. So if he wasn't injured, he was gonna be the number one pick. You know, him and Wiggins, you know, they had a, a bomb squad at Kansas. Yep. Right. So in ter- in terms of that man, how far can how how far can Denver go this year? Because because I'm saying the West is loaded. So how far how far can they go? And Murray's coming off an injury. Well, if if they play the Lakers early, they can't go too far. Right. Right. I mean, because I'm a big I'm a big Lakers guy this year. With all the vets they got, they got the right pieces. LeBron can take more of a backseat in terms of handling the ball with Westbrook there now. AD is the man, like he's fragile. You know. When, he's when fragile. healthy, when healthy, he's when fragile. Healthy. That's you know fine. It. You know it. He's fragile. Yeah, sometimes he has to be there. In order, in order to have the success, what people talk about, you got to be but, there. So now, but when you when you bring in guys like Melo and these other guys, like it takes Dwight, it takes a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. a lot of pressure off those guys to to compete night in night out. It's eighty two right. games. Like that's right. a long right. season. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I think it gives them some more freedom to, to play other guys. Um, I like Portland. You know, I don't know if Dame's going to end up staying there. Uh, hopefully, Where should hopefully. he go? Where you want to see him at? He needs to play with another. He needs to play with a, a, a bona fide. If, if, I, if, I, if I have my choice, obviously I have him in Boston. You yeah. know, like I yep. think Boston would be a really good spot for him in terms of the fans, you know, like the guys they have on the team. You know, he, Jason he was, and, and Jalen, them that's three. Scary. That's yeah, scary. I mean, I don't know how we get that done, but right, right. If, yeah. if, if if Brad could get that done, then he he the right Come man for this history. for, for the job. <laughs> yeah, Danny, move out the way. Danny made some really good moves, <laughs> but if, if we could figure out a way to get um, Dame Lillard out here, that'll be that'll be fire. Um, how but, you feel you about know, the Nets? Nets, eh, I like KD. Is that a good fit? Is Harden and Kyrie and all of them a good fit? If you like excitement, yeah. You know, but when it comes down to it, and you got to get stops in the playoffs, I, I, I'm not sold yet. You know, I, maybe your offense is, is your defense, um, but I, I'm not. Because you got to outscore score them. That's one thing. You're, you're going to have to outscore them. Right, and then them boys are going to put up at least 130, 140 on, on a good night. Yeah, but not in the playoffs, though. The playoffs is a, a whole nother – it's another animal. I guess it's about being healthy too. Because if, if one of those guys is not healthy, then that really takes away from what that is, you right. know. And the East is is getting stronger and stronger, mm-hmm. you know. Like it used to be a walk, like oh, Brian, Brian's going to the like. It's not like that no more. You got like four teams that are going to compete. Milwaukee ain't going nowhere anytime soon. All right, I'm just real. Y'all you know, this the is real. Ho- I think he, y'all, that was that was a major nah, he, statement. How do you? He, he I, 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 I want to get your insight on that man, on Giannis, just in terms of his development, how long it took them. He stayed, signed the max. Him and Middleton, he got out the mud. He developed. You know what I mean? And and and, and he dropped a fifty ball to win the. I mean, how, like, yeah. how, how did I'm you a, feel watching that? Well, people don't know this, but I grew up a Bucks fan. I was a big Ray Allen guy. Um, Glenn but it's Robinson. crazy because, yeah, big dog Sam Cassell. Like well, two point it, geezer. It, yeah, <laughs> it hurt. It hurt me when Philly beat us in the conference finals. You know when they ended up going to play the Lakers that year. Um, but in terms of the Bucks now, like I'm more of a Celtics fan just by being in Boston. You know, I, you know I've got great relationships with the coaching staff. So like that was my, you know that that's what I root for. Now it's like being Boston. You know I'm a I'm a Celtics fan. But it felt good for Giannis to Philly really get that that. You know that monkey off his back. People say, "Oh, you can't, you know, do it in the playoffs. Oh, you can't shoot." But he just kept working. You know, he got his money, which I'm happy for. And they, you know, they they started winning. I think a lot of it had to do with some of the moves they made, bringing in Drew Holiday. You know, big. that was big. Chris Middleton played out of his mind. Now he's a like people respect him now. Like he's another guy. Oh, he got 158 million. That's bad. Like why would they give him that much money? That's all I was hearing for about a year. Gotta and somebody. got it exactly. The small markets, they got to pay <laughs> the guys that they have, first right. and foremost. But people don't realize what he does. He's a good defender. He can shoot. He's 6'8". Like, what else do you want? Like, right. literally, you can't get much more out of Chris Middleton than than you get, you know? All right, man. Are you, um, are you a football fan? Say what? Are you a football fan? 
49ers. Wow. Wow. Jimmy. Jimmy Garoppolo. They're 2 and 0. Yeah. They're 2 0. They, uh, they beat the Eagles yesterday, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a slow grind, man. I'm, I'm going to be real, real cautious this year. I'm not going to get too high, too low on them. Um, but I do know we're, we're, tr- we're going right back in the, in the winning direction. You know, Who like. Who should they start? Trey or him or Jimmy? I got to go with Jimmy. We're paying him the big money. You know, like let's let's go with him for now, and you know, if if he's not doing well, then let's 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 make a change. You got a good plan B. I mean, because I feel like Trey's good. He's good. Don't get me wrong, but when last time we seen Jimmy out there with a healthy 49ers team, it was in the uh, in the Super Bowl. So I feel like if you know if if, the, if everybody's healthy, I mean, Jimmy Jimmy can still do his job. You know I mean, but it's Jimmy's job to lose it. So and, and, and probably should have won that Super Bowl um, had we we made a couple different play calls. I feel like they got real passive in that game. Yep. and yep. it really turned. And football is a huge momentum thing. And right. you give right. a guy like Pat Mahomes momentum. It's 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 yeah. over, it's, you know. It's, it's, right. There's nothing you can do about it. Like he's that good, so um, it is what it is. Hopefully they'll learn from it. They'll get better. At least those guys got experience playing at that level, you know. But we've been close a few times, you know. When the Ravens right, right. beat us, you know, and I was, that's when we had all our talent. You know, Cap was doing his thing. We had Alden Smith, but you know he was just oh, out of this Alden. world. Like yeah, yeah he's but he, he's a different guy off the field. Like. Yeah. Right. You know, Patrick so Willis, you had Bowman, yeah, Boston Boss, is in his last leg. They had the rookie, I forgot what's his name, Chris Boylan. He came in rookie of the year and then he retired yeah, after yeah. his rookie year. I'm like, bro, you retired after your rookie year, but that whole CTE thing at middle linebacker, that's a real thing. Like, right, right. I get it, I understand. All right, man, uh, we've covered a lot, man. I want to get to uh, this is just a few more things I want to cover, man. Brady. 21 years in the league, man, playing at a high level. Are they running it back in Tampa? Mm, nah, football is too hard to run it back. Um, but if anybody could do it, it's Tom Brady. Right, you can't. You can't. I, ain't go, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bet my money against him, I'll tell you that. Veteran laden team, man. You know I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's not a lot of young guys on me. It's a lot of, a lot of vets, man, who've been through it. So I think I think right. they got a good chance, man. And they're all still hungry, too. Yep. They're all still yeah. hungry. Still hungry, man. All right, man. I'm gonna put you on the spot right now, big dog. All time starting five of of, of 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 hoopers that you would get on the court with that that you played with. That I played with your all time favorite Whoa. your favorite teammates top mm-hmm. five right now that you get on the floor with. All right, I got Andre Roberson at the point guard. Give me Albert Kenny. Dre. Yep, yep. Give me Kenny Small at the two guard. I take. Uh, Jay King. Well, he hurt the feelings. Three. Now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nah, J- yeah, get that message. Jay, get that Jay text K- message. Oh, hey, text me and then bring <laughs> your five. And bring your five. All right. <laughs> text me and bring your five. Uh, at the five. Or the, oh, that's that's tough. Um, including yourself. Go, so including. I'm yourself. gonna go way back. Justin Watkins. People don't even know who that. Is. It probably don't even know who that was, but Jake when we were in the eighth grade, Justin got ranked number one in the state, and mm-hmm. nobody could tell him nothing after that. Jeez. He never he never worked out after that, but I'm telling you what, <laughs> this dude, it, I can't, yo, you laughing. <laughs> dudes, dudes that are going to listen to that, that know Justin, like, oh he, was, he, was, he, he, was, he was a really good, like, if I had him, if I was his trainer, he would have been a high major. Like if we had the right scenario where Justin was going home, going to sleep, waking up in the morning, eating breakfast, that type of like he wasn't doing that. Justin was a a guy in eighth grade that was kind of living like he was a grown up, you know. And wow. I just leave I'll, I'll leave it at that. And throughout his high school career, he was just so steady. And it just one day he just snapped in high school, senior year, he dropped sixty four. And it was a thing in the paper, like, oh, this guy. And it's like, this is not surprising to none of us that know him, you know, through AAU and stuff. Like, he was that good. But there wasn't yeah. trainers back then. There yeah. wasn't a lot of mentors back then. In this, It was a few, not to say there wasn't any, but now I feel like parents could find, reach out, and you could you could seek out a trainer. Like, right, you, could, right. you could do your research. Like, oh, I want to. 
I got a guard. I want to work out with this guy or like this guy right now. Like if I had a, a, a son that was in middle school, high school, like, and I wanted him to work on ball handling, I, I'll probably send him to, to my guy, TJ. Like TJ runs his own training facility in Lowell and he's a really good trainer. Like he knows all the science behind it. He, he re, like he lives for it, you know, and that's the kind of guy that I would want to put my, you know, my little guy with, you know, so right, like, right, right. um, I, I just think, you know, that five that I, I said, Dre, Kenny, J King and Justin Watkins, that was, and we're all the same class, like class of 05 in high school, um, you know, and, and class of 10 in, in college, you know, cause funny, cause all of us did like an extra year, um, in between college and high school. So, um, that would be my five of f- favorite teammates. Um, okay. To, okay. To get out on the court with so. Make sure you send them this. Make sure you send. Yeah, them. I will. I will. I send them. <laughs> no, dis- no disrespect to the other guys out there. No disrespect. And, you know, but match up, play us. Match up. Send top that five NBA players ever. Top five. All time. Your top no, five. No positions. Whatever you want. I like take on the Shaq. Right now. I take Shaq. Oh, the most LeBron, big man. Kobe, Ooh. Magic, and wow. Jordan. And there's no team that could beat that team because we got everything we need. We wow. got the toughest, biggest, strongest center. We got the best guy that ever walked on the planet. We got two playmakers that are ridiculous. Right. And, and we got Kobe. <laughs> so, like, who can beat that team? Like, this, I don't I don't know another team that could beat that team. That's you what, got two stone what, cold killers on that team, what, Kobe man. and MJ. Like, yeah, and then you, who's taking the last shot? There ain't no last shot. We have 40. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> like, what? What do you mean? But if there was a last shot, MJ, maybe. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not maybe taking this. the ball out of his hands. I'm a big man. I'm throwing it in the shack, right? I'll go Ooh. single coverage against Shaq. Who's stopping that? Clear it out. If you follow him, you, you, all right, sure. You only get six of them things. You got it. You probably, got if you guard, if you guard Shaq all game, you probably in foul trouble, or right. he's just dunking on you all game. <laughs> you so like, so I, I don't know. Ma- I, I would love to see Magic and Shaq play together, but that's something that we'll never see. So, oh, yeah, man. yo, you know. we, we covered a lot, big dog. We appreciate you coming on, man. Before yeah, we go ahead sure, and get out sure. of here, man, you know. For all the young athletes, young trainers, man, is there any any type of inspiration that you want to leave for them tonight? I would just say confidence, you know, continue to work, you know, get up in the morning. You know, the one thing I, if I can go back in time and do more, I, I would sleep more. Like the recovery thing is, is a real thing. Like, you know, I feel like in college I was staying up a lot. I got hooked on, uh, what's that show? 24 with Jack Bauer. I literally would get watch the whole the whole twenty four hours and be like, why why am I tired the next day? Like, that's why. You know what I mean? Like, but in all seriousness, put in that extra work. You know, when the coaches is on you, they on you for a reason. They want to they want to get something out of you. You know, they want to they want to push you to that next level. So, hopefully, you know, somebody will listen to this. You know, and, and we'll make an impact on. You know, on their future, you guys are doing an excellent job with this. Um, maybe it. I can get my starting five uh, on this. We can get on here together and chop it up one day. Oh, that's, um, that's but, but definitely, I um, appreciate you guys having me. Um, anytime you guys need anything, let us know. You know, in terms of, of training, if you got any players looking for some serious training, Boston Elite, man, we, we do a little bit of everything. I didn't even touch in the – you know, the one one piece that we do now is is, you know, we're adding the video side to it, you know, and the branding side. So, that's you know, that's something we can get into next time. Um, if there is a next time, you guys oh, yeah. want to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, so, You're home, big dog. You're always welcome, man. Yeah, yeah. You're always so welcome home. We, Pete, we what can you got? Into- um, I got have confidence in your journey, like Coach just said, man. Be have have confidence in and in, in believe in yourself. Cause at the end of the day, you in order to um, conquer or or do anything in life, you have to have that, that confidence, that backbone. Okay, I can do this. I can do that. Just instill that in yourself, and you'll, you know, the sky's the limit once you start believing in yourself. Right, right, right. Yes. Hopefully, it, man. Um, for all the young athletes listening, man, I think uh, this is something that I've, I've, I've been encountering now is protecting your peace and protecting your purpose. So if you're really out here getting into it, if you're putting the time in, if you're dedicating it, 
put your put your life to it and you're putting it all into your sport or whatever craft it is you're in protect that you know do not let anyone no distractions nothing can come in, in between your time in the, on in the gym on the court or whatever you're doing in the books protect your time protect your purpose and if it, and if the game brings you peace protect it because it, it, it it'll, it'll go away in the, in the blink of an eye you can lose you can lose your game you can lose your talent at the blink of an eye protect it at all costs if it means that much to you like you see all these NBA players man it, NBA NFL MLB it means it means they'll, they'll give their lives lives up for their careers so you have to take that same mentality and protect it at all costs so that's what I want to give that's what I want to leave all the young athletes man but coach man we're gonna give you your flowers you're a coach, you're a trainer, you're an amazing mentor, you're a Brandeis hoop legend. That means you keep doing what you're doing with the young kids, man. Keep elevating the game of basketball, the science, the training behind it. I mean, however we can help support you and getting you more kids, let us know. We are here on the Talk to Shit Sports Podcast. This is what we do, man. We support and we elevate sports, um, um, all sports, basketball, baseball, football, boxing, whatever you do, man. We want to protect and, 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 and elevate these games for our young people going forward for the next 10, 15, 20 years, man. So we are here. Everyone, go subscribe to our Talk Is Shit Sports Podcast YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram at Talk Is Shit Sports Podcast or Facebook Talk Is Sports Podcast. And wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, um, and Anchor. That's where you can find all our journeys, man. We got some really amazing people coming through here every week to share their journeys, to share some inspiration and bringing you in, into their lives as athletes, man. It's really important that you lock in with us. Uh, coach, it's been real, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Man. Thanks for having me, y'all. Appreciate you, big dog. We out.